Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Um, today I wanted to do a little video on eight questions that you should always ask yourself and um, that may actually help you achieve substantially better health in the long run. Okay. Uh, now, one of the things I often talk about is the impact of sleep on our health. And we know that a majority of people these days don't get refreshing sleep. So if you ask yourself, do I sleep OK? Most people will say, yes, I sleep OK. But then if you ask yourself, do I wake up feeling refreshed in the morning? Very few people turn around and say, yes, I feel refreshed in the morning. Most people say I still feel tired. Now, there is a condition called sleep apnea. Uh, which is uh, hugely prevalent in the Western world. In fact, it is estimated that one in five people have this condition called sleep apnea. Uh, and basically what happens in sleep apnea is that uh, we st we're okay going to sleep and we're okay in light sleep. But as soon as we go into deep sleep, we stop breathing. And because we stop breathing, we then have to come back to light sleep to breathe again. And so a lot of people end up having to do this all night long where they're going into deep sleep, but they can't um, uh, breathe in deep sleep. So they come back to light sleep. And so they continue to get depressed, uh, disturbed sleep all night long. You know, this can happen 50, 60 times an hour. And then these are the people who then wake up and don't feel refreshed. Now, the problem with sleep apnea is that if you have sleep apnea, then you are much higher to develop things like high blood pressure. You're much likely to to, more likely to develop diabetes, you're much more likely to develop obesity, you're much more likely to develop atrial fibrillation, it increases your risk of strokes, it increases the risk of heart attacks, it increases the risk of sudden death, it also increases the risk of road traffic accidents. 85% of all sleep apnea still remains undiagnosed, okay? So to my mind, this is uh, terrible because people get treated for high blood pressure, people get treated for diabetes. If actually it is sleep apnea that bring that is bringing on the diabetes or high blood pressure, then obviously it makes sense to identify and treat the sleep apnea first, because by treating the sleep apnea, the diabetes might just get better on its own without the need for lots of medications to make the numbers look prettier. All right. So I wanted to introduce you to a really interesting eight point questionnaire called the Stop Bang Questionnaire. STOP bang b a n g questionnaire okay this is something that is a um, that is an instrument uh, that uh, you can access on www.stopbang.ca okay <coughs> it was uh, written about by chung et al and i'll write the <coughs> sorry i'll write the references on the um, in in the description on this video so basically what they've said is that you should try and answer these eight questions. And if you score highly on these eight questions, uh, then you may have a very high chance of having sleep apnea, in which case you should get investigated for it. So the first question is about snoring. Do you snore loudly, uh, loud enough to be heard through closed doors or for your bed partner to elbow you for snoring at night? If indeed you do snore that loudly, then score, you should score yourself as having one point. Number two, do you feel tired, fatigued or sleepy during the daytime, such as falling asleep during driving or falling asleep when you're talking to someone? If you are one of those people who can drop a, fall asleep at the drop of a hat during the daytime, then you should really be scoring yourself one again. All right. The third question is, has anyone observed you stopping breathing or choking or gasping during your sleep? And if that has happened, then score yourself another point. Uh, next question is about blood pressure. Do you have or are you being treated for high blood pressure? And if you score, if you uh, score, uh, if you have that, score yourself another point. The next issue, the next thing is to calculate your body mass index, okay? And that can be done by calculating your um, height and your weight. And if you go on Google, there are lots of body mass calculators where you can put your height and weight and it'll give you a body mass index. But if your body mass index is more than 35 kilograms per meter square, score yourself one point. If you're above the age of 50, score yourself one point. 
if you have a large neck size so if you're a man if your neck collar is more than 17 inches and for a female if the shirt collar is more than 16 inches score yourself one point and if you're of male sex if you're a male score yourself one point so if you score zero to two points then you are generally considered at low risk. Low risk doesn't mean no risk, but low risk of sleep apnea. If you score three to four points, then you're at intermediate risk. And if you score between five and eight questions, then you're at high risk of sleep apnea. So if you are at high risk of sleep apnea, then I certainly think you should go to your GP and ask him to organize for you to have a sleep study, which will confirm the diagnosis. All right. Uh, and that could potentially change your life because if you have sleep apnea and you're treated for it, uh, you will become, you will feel more, you will feel better, you will feel more energetic, you will, uh, your comorbidities will get less, your blood pressure will be better controlled, your AF will be better controlled, you're reducing your risk. Um, and therefore, I think it's really, really important. Now, I would really be grateful. Um, if you could please consider sharing this video because someone somewhere is undoubtedly likely to benefit okay it could make a substantial difference to their life so places like india if you happen to be in india and you're watching this please please consider sharing this video one of the fortunate things about having a platform like i have on my channel is that you can reach out to lots of people and hopefully if you do so and you educate them uh, then someone may benefit. So I would be so incredibly grateful if you could share this video. It could save someone's life. Thank you so much for watching. Um, we're doing a heart health seminar in New York uh, on the 4th and 5th of August this year, 2018. If you'd like to attend, please visit www.hearthealthweekend.com. Okay, hearthealthweekend.com. Uh, I would love to see you there. Uh, I'll be there uh, both days. I can answer any questions you have. So if you happen to be anywhere in the vicinity of New York City, USA, uh, please pop by. Uh, but um, all the details are on that website. Uh, I would also be grateful if you could consider um, subscribing to the channel. I would be grateful if you could consider visiting my website, www.yorkcardiology.co.uk. And finally, also my Facebook page is Your Cardiology One. Uh, the number one, your cardiology one. Thank you so much. All the best.